So I get out of Sears school, and then before you know it, a month later, we're going to Grenada. It was quite the one after the other. And, of course, I was one of the first guys at Fort Bragg um, to get assigned to go to, to get on an airplane to go to Grenada. And um, two things about it. Mark mentioned it. You know, when everybody's like, we're going to Grenada, I was like, where the hell's Grenada? You know? right. <laughs> So, and I'll tell you a little story about what I know and why we, we did that in a minute, but I want to tell the, the story. So we, you know, we get called in, we're all like running around. Everybody's like, yeah, this is a bunch of BS, you know, and you know, it's typical, you know, I, whatever they called it, tier, it wasn't tier one or RRF one, right, right. Right, you know, that thing. Yeah. So, you know, we were like, well, we're not RRF one. Cause I was in first brigade. And they're like, no. And then, you know, Joe and, and the Colonel and everybody went, Dan, we want you to go. Charlie Daniels, Jimmy Felton, you know, just guys who had been around a little bit. And, you know, I just come off of a lot of training. And, and so, boom, we were going. And I remember going down to the staging area. And this is, I'll never forget it. We go through, man, they're handing us grenades and, and weapons and, and we're getting all the bullets we want. And we're, we get through the line and we're all like, we don't have any smoke, you know, yeah. and, you know, that's number one tool for a uh, forward air controller. Sure. So we go to the guy and said, Hey, can we get smoke? Oh no, no, no. You can't have smoke. You got to have waivers and we can't, you can't have <laughs> smoke on the, on the airplane. And we're like, wait a second. You just give Joe Snuffy private a grenade. Right. Okay. Yeah. Blow, it'll blow a friggin' hole in the side of the airplane. And you're worried about, but, but the, in the, in the air force's day, you know, if you had smoke, you had to register because of white phosphorus and the, oh, yeah. and, the and, and so forth. But we were saying, dude, that's that's for peacetime. This is wartime. Right. You just gave everybody. I got ten grenades in my pocket, <laughs> right. okay? And you're worried about giving me smoke? And then we, you know, we're all like, we're Air Force guys. Our job is to mark targets. But we, you know, we, we'll throw a grenade, but we'd rather have a white phosphorus or a red grenade, you know, smoke sure. grenade, and so forth. It took them like almost an hour to get approval to give us. Uh, smoke grenades. So, I just laughed my head off. They yeah. were handing out everything. It was a candy store, you know. All Anything. Right. Oh, you wanted, you wanted a, a, a well, you couldn't get a bazooka, but you know, you wanted a handheld this or this, that, and the other. You got it, <laughs> right? <laughs> but you couldn't get smoke. So, and then uh, we went to the to Grenada. Um, but we had parachutes on, but we didn't jump. Yeah. Um, by that time, they had secured the airfield. Um, and then Mark talked about how, you know, so many questions came out of the fact you had all these airborne people, they never jumped. And then, you know, he talked about Panama. I'll talk about what, that when we get to Panama. But, uh, you know, we went into Grenada. We did some missions. Um, wasn't really much to do. There was a little bit of resistance. But one of the things that was very interesting about Grenada was they had a Navy aircraft carrier there and we couldn't talk to it. And it, it had a bunch of A-7s on it. Oh. So, so uh, we had Major Nelson, I think it was his name. Uh, he, he'll be on that sheet, but he was an ex-Navy guy. So was Terry Bittner. But um, they flew out on a helicopter to the carrier to get in contact so that we could start talking to each other. Okay. Okay. And so cool. we, we got in hold of the, the A-7s and we started using them for, we had like four or five missions with them. Nice. Um, and so we had taken over. Uh, one end of the airfield in Grenada where they were building the um, terminal and it was empty. So air force all took it over. You might, th there's some pictures of us all hanging out there. And then the, when the tailors came down, it all, it became the, uh, the uh, staging c center for maps and all that. Oh, okay. So they set up there, you know, where, when the airplanes came in the manifest for everything. So what was really cool about that was every time there was a pallet came in, we knew exactly what was on it. So we had, uh, I turned, uh, I turned 21 in Grenada. No, I turned 23. Um, and, um, we, we found the, the, the pallets with Heineken in it and, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and we had, and then we had the, 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 back then, you know, they had MREs, but they were still in the test phase. Yeah. And we found the pallets with all the MREs. So, you know, we had pound cake and Heineken for my birthday. <laughs> right uh, on. And, yeah, it was right. <laughs> so the, the tails. And then the other thing they, when the, when they brought all the students down that were there on the, on the Island, mm -hmm. there, there was a bunch of medical students. 
they brought them down and staged them where we were. Oh, okay. So they all came down and, you know, they were, they had MPs watching them, but they were just hanging out and we were, they were walking over to us and we were walking over to them and we were like, Hey, were you really hostages and everything? And they were like, no, not really. We were kind of, you know, told to stay in place. There were some people around, but you know, it was scary. We didn't know what was going on. And then of course they're like, we got all kinds of things back in our, in our barracks, in our, in our, the places we were staying. So we took them down a bunch of names and a bunch of addresses and, and they told us where their stuff was. Some people didn't even have a chance to get their passports. And stuff. So we went back to their rooms and gathered up as much as we could based on what they said. We were worried about getting charged for looting. So <laughs> right. We had them write down that we give permission to, for you know, I think I wasn't a sergeant. No, I was a sergeant. Maybe not. But whatever. Senior Mahanikin, you know, he, he can go. He's getting some important papers, you know. And, and then, of course, we went up to the guys and said, why don't we just take a truck and take all these people back and let them gather. Pers- just tell them you get one bag. You're they right. said, no, absolutely not. And then what was we didn't know what was happening. The reason why they didn't want them to leave is because the next thing, an airplane showed up with the press. Oh. Because they banned the press from Grenada. Yeah. Yeah. So they, there was no press. And that was they were they brought the students to that end of the airfield so that they would be isolated and then the press could come and talk to them. Oh, okay. And so that's how they hooked them all up. And then we said, okay, when they're done, just let us know. You know, we'll we'll get you know, we had Jeeps. We said, we'll, we'll throw whatever, but they, they wouldn't let us go get it. So we went and grabbed as much as we could. And they said, take whatever you want. And we were like, well, I don't really, you know, want to take <laughs> your stuff. Right, um, right. But, you know, we did grab a few things that people really want. You know, somebody said, you know, I got my wedding ring there or whatever. You know, I can't remember the items we did. And then we, we came back uh, in the middle of the night. We couldn't come back. You know, nobody wanted to come back. Uh, they didn't know how people were going to take it. Sure. You know, so coming back from Vietnam. So we all came back on late flights and just went back into debt one, into the into the squadron, into the into the place. And just we were there. 